I love to hear that in the sanctuary. Life. Uh, good morning and welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Linda Manson, uh, privileged with serving this congregation. I welcome you here this morning for the service where we will celebrate the life of our beloved sister, Thelma L. Clendenin. So just a couple of words before we begin. Anyone who is speaking this morning will speak from the lectern here. You are welcome to remove your mask as you speak. Once you get up here, you can remove it. Before you come back down, please put it back on. <clears throat> um, we are a welcoming congregation, so as you are moved, if you feel like clapping, standing, shouting, you are welcome. Please rise as we begin our service at the rear of the church with the thanksgiving for the baptism of our dear sister. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In her baptism, Thelma was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. And I ask you to echo, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O oh blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. And God's people said, Amen. Consolate where'er you languish, come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here, bring your wounded heart. Here, tell your anguish earth has no sorrow that heaven can not heal see here the bread of life see waters flow Forth from the throne of God, pure from above, come I take it off. the feast of love, come ever knowing earth has no sorrow I can't find it. that heaven cannot heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can not heal The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you heal the broken heart and bind up the wounds of the afflicted. Strengthen us in our weakness, calm our troubled spirits, and dispel our doubts and fears. In Christ rising from the dead, you renew our trust in you, that by the power of your love, we shall one day be brought together again with our Thelma. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thelma was born to Mary Elizabeth and George William Rhodes on October 4th, 1930 in Kinston, North Carolina. Her family moved to New York in 1933. She attended public schools in the Bronx and Manhattan and graduated from George Washington High School in the Heights in 1948. Thelma met Chanston Clendenin on a blind date in September of 1945. They were then married at Transfiguration Lutheran Church in Manhattan on February 26, 1949. Thelma converted from her childhood Baptist faith to become a Lutheran and raised three children, Stanley Charles, Diane Rose, and Tyrone Leonard in that faith, Lutheran faith. First attending Transfiguration, then St. Thomas Lutheran in Jamaica, Queens, and until her death, the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. Chanston died in January 1992, and in July 1996, Thelma married Leon Pollock, who died February of 1999. After Thelma's first two children were school-aged, she went to Brooklyn College on a scholarship majoring in nursing. Upon completion, she was employed at Queens General Hospital as an emergency room nurse and later became head nurse in the pediatrics department. Throughout her career, she also worked at Booth Memorial Hospital, Long Island Jewish Hospital, and then Doctors Hospital in Freeport. After her youngest son was school-aged, Thelma went back to school and earned her bachelor's degree in nursing. She was a school nurse in the Hempstead School District for three years, and then a school nurse in the Roosevelt School District for 21 years. After retiring from Roosevelt School District, she worked an additional eight years at Michelle's Upward Prep as a health consultant. During her retirement year, she was very active with MPC 55 Plus Club. Thelma served four years as recording secretary, two years as vice president, two years as president, and finally as a courtesy chairperson. She was also engaged in various community services. She was a member of the American Nursing Association, Roosevelt Camp Placement, 4-H Club, Salvation Army, and the Kiwanis Club. OSHA, which examined the school buildings, and also Roosevelt Schools Against Drugs. As a member of the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, she served in various roles, including membership on the church council, evangelism, social ministry, and education committees, Sunday school, Sunday school superintendent, 
organizer of Cub Scout Pack 84 and then leader coach. In 1987, Thelma was diagnosed with breast cancer. After surgery, she lived cancer free until 2017, at which time she was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. From 2018 to her death, she was confined to walk with a walker, but continued to live life, using her computer for emailing, conducting business, playing games, traveling, and attending worship when she was able. Thelma is survived by her daughter, Diane, youngest son, Tyrone, and his wife, Tanisha, four granddaughters and one grandson, 12 great-grandchildren, one great-great-grandson, eight godchildren, and a host of cousins. That's our Thelma. Joan. At this time, we <clears throat> just like to offer space for people to offer personal reflections, uh, family and friends. Uh, first will be Lightning, and then will be Pamela, and then it is open to the community. We just ask that you do your best to keep your remarks to two minutes. Mm -hmm. And again, you can speak from here, and you're welcome to remove your mask once you are at the lectern and replace it before you leave. Lightning and come on. The Lord be with you. Give your grandmother a hug was the first thing and the last thing you heard at the Clinton and Annan house. Especially for me, being a boy, it squeezed the life out of me since I was born until the last time I saw this woman only a few months ago. If you were a guy, you probably got punched in the stomach, grabbed roughly by the face, and she had something heartfelt to tell you because she cared about you. If you lived next door, if you lived down the street, she was sure to make sure her eye was on you. And her eye was on you because she knew exactly what she was done since the last time you had seen her. My grandmother was a beautiful and amazing woman. I constantly went to her for all kinds of advice. She also gave me the right path of the kind of woman I would want to be by my side. A woman who was strong, a woman who was smart, woman who could do whatever she wanted to, because she did. She held up every single one in our family. She tired out two men in her lifetime. That's a lot. A lot. And both of my grandfathers, I love so much. They both also taught me so much. I want to say thank the Lord for letting me spend this much time with her more time than I ever thought I had. But there have been so many times in the last 10 years where I thought she was leaving. But she was like, no, I want to go, but I still have work to do. And I hope that I have the wisdom to understand that also. That when you have work to do, it's good to be there and make yourself accessible. Thank you very much for coming today. My family thanks you all for making a journey here in the cold because Thelma would have done it too. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. <clears throat> so I'm the second granddaughter of grandma. 
Um, so um, I just have a few things to say. I thought first I'd start with the scripture. Um, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to be healed. And a time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. And a time to mourn and a time to dance. It's Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 4. That scripture um, came to my mind actually just Sunday when I was in church and uh, just something that my parents and my grandmother I know had a very um, big part of wasn't always the best acting child or person for that matter. Um, so I, um, you know, went a little south, if you will. And um, I never um, felt unloved or uncared for by my grandmother. In fact, I do specifically remember speaking of some of my waywardness and being able to speak openly about it. Um, when I think of my grandma, I'll remember um, her taking us to different um, New York tourist attractions, telling stories about her work as a nurse, and knowing that she gave me my unique name, and how she intentionally mispronounced it every time I saw her. Usually that just happened on the first greeting, but it always made me laugh because I was like, they told me you came up with that. <laughs> so um, one of my greatest memories, or probably my biggest memory of my grandmother, um, they used to come almost every Christmas after Christmas season. She would come with my Uncle Di. And sometimes Granddaddy would also come. And boy, you could tell when New York arrived in Missouri, OK? My grandmother was always the one that stood out, though. Um, she would get off the plane looking like she was straight out of a fashion magazine. I mean, I would just be like, that's her, that's her, that's her. My Uncle Ty was pretty fly, too. He'd show up, and all the girls in town were re always ready to meet him. I, I, I specifically remember that. Remember that? Yeah. OK. So anyway. I'm certain that um, just like she entered the gates of the airport in Missouri, she entered the gates of heaven the same way, in similar fashion. Thanks unto God. I just wanted to say that while I didn't know our beloved sister, I just have been so inspired by this music that she selected. Everything has such a profound uh, meaning. Even the first song, Come Ye is Consolate, knowing that there perhaps may be some sadness. And just as I am, as I'll do a, a verse in the chorus, just as I am without one plea, Lord, abide with me. And softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling and I know that Pastor Linda and I have to choose music each week for our worship service. And I thought, wow, this lady is something else. She chose some wonderful music with some profound messages to us. Just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou be 
hearest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just, just as Without want, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou beest me come. To thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come to thee, O Lamb of God. Is there anyone else who would like to offer their personal reflections regarding our sister Thelma? Good morning. Uh, my name is Wade Israel, and I am a member here of Good Shepherd Church. The things that I can say about this Clendenin uh, will go back many years. Uh, I was telling the son that when I came to Good Shepherd, uh, Pastor Trexler was here at the time. And Ms. Clendenin and Mr. Clendenin were asked to sponsor my wife and I membership here. And she gladly did that. They gladly did that. And uh, ever since that time, she's been very close to me and my family. Uh, at the time, my kids, I had two sons, they were very young, but as they grew, she always cared about, you know, how they were progressing and what they were doing. You know, every Sunday when I came to church, you know, it's been then you, I could, you could almost take attendance here at Good Shepherd because you knew where everyone sat. <laughs> if they did not, if you did not see them, then you would ask, you know, is something wrong or where were they? And Ms. Clinton then has always sat here. Uh, and when I would come in, uh, she would be there. Uh, as you said, very stylish. You couldn't miss her, very stylish. But she always made you feel welcome and was happy to see you. Uh, and when we had the peace, you could feel the love because she, uh, you know how some people might just gradually do it. She made you feel that you were worth the, uh, the effort and the love that she had to offer. So I say to the family, we're going to miss her. I know Good Shepherd's going to miss her. And I would miss her for the love that she showed me and my family. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. Is there another? May I? May I?
May I? Good morning. Um, I'm Kent. I'm a friend of Lightning's. And I've only met Elma a couple times. The last time I met her, the 20 you mentioned, the hugs. Because I, I know she wasn't feeling well. And she came up to me. And I'm not a hugger. But it was inevitable I was going to get hugged that day. So I bowed to the inevitable. And I don't remember if I got punched in the stomach or she pulled my beard. I believe it was both. But then she looked up at me and said, I'm glad you're my grandson's friend. And that just has stuck with me. And when I heard she pass, that was the first memory that popped into my head. And then I saw the picture on the program. And that's exactly how I remember her in my head. And I have never seen her in that outfit. So that's just, it's, uh, my interactions with her were so brief compared to yours, but I have the same impression of her that you guys do. I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty telling of her life. So you were very, very blessed to have known her as long as you did. Thank you. Am I? Am I I'm not sure. Is there another before we proceed with the service? This is her this first card. Those wonderful kind words about our sister. We will proceed with our service now with the reading of the scripture. Uh, we have three readers. If all three of you will come forth now and sit here so you can go in succession, that would be wonderful. Can anyone else still speak? Hi, too. Hi, too. Hi, too. Do you think they can hear us? I don't Have think so. Known. Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power and to the faint and strength. up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint the psalm for today is psalm 27 the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now, we had, now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord 
and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of the adversary, for false witness have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your hearts take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen. things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I ask you to rise now for the reading of the gospel. Beloved of God, I invite you to listen now to the gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know, you know the way to the place where I am going. This, beloved, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. These types of reflections are always a little difficult. It's made a little easier today by the wonderful things that we heard about Thelma before I get to stand before you. But it is a deeply painful thing to lose someone you love. It is a deeply painful thing to have to adjust to life without that individual as a part of your life as being here for you and also for the community. And I believe I'm safe in saying that we all are here today because we want to or need to say goodbye to Thelma. And we want to do it today with the utmost respect for her. Most of you have known Thelma for a really long time, whereas I have only known her for a relatively short time. We met in 2019, soon after I began to serve here at Good Shepherd. But like all of you, I really enjoyed knowing Thelma. I enjoyed her humor. I enjoyed her stories. And I found her to be very insightful, compassionate, caring, and extremely empathetic. She took a particular interest in others who were going through tough times in their lives because she really felt their pain. She knew their pain. But she found a way to love and even to thrive through the pain that she was going through. Thelma was a woman of strong faith. And though her experience in life was very mixed, through some of the stories that she said to me, I know that that's just the human condition. She knew sorrow and she knew struggle, but she also knew the greatest joys of life. 
through it all, she never lost her faith in God. She never lost sight of the fact that she was loved by and that she belonged to God. It is, beloved, troubling. It is troubling to lose someone that we really care for. But yet in the scripture that I just read to you from John, Jesus says to us, do not let your heart be troubled. Now that may sound a little weird, and it feels a little weird for me to say it. Of course, our hearts are troubled. There is pain and there is sorrow, and we should not ever try to deny that. But there is also a profound truth in these words that Jesus spoke. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It's not a platitude. It's not a Hallmark card quote. Jesus simply gives an amazing reason why our hearts do not have to be troubled. In this passage, beloved, we are encouraged by Jesus to have faith. But Jesus also says something else. Jesus talks about what it is, what life is in general, what it's like in general. He talks about how to live a life of abundance. Beloved, if you read the Gospels, and maybe you have read all of them, you will see that once in a while, every once in a while, Jesus makes reference to what happens after this life. Jesus talks about the eternal. He talks about life after death. And here in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, my, in my Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that where I am, you may be also. Here, beloved Jesus speaks of the hope that we have for life beyond this life, this life that we know. And he says that he's going to prepare a place for all who choose to believe that. Which means for me, and it struck me this week as I was thinking about this passage that I've read many, many times and preached on many times, it says to me that over that over, these, over, this, over our lifetimes, but not just that. Jesus has spent over 2,000 years since saying these words, preparing a place for us, preparing a place for Thelma. I've come to know, beloved, that time is a very strange thing. When you have lived for a while, you realize how quickly life moves forward we begin to realize how short our time is in this realm. We realize how fleeting and brief, brief everything that we experience in life is. Suffering, though it may seem to be unending in the total scheme of things, is really brief. Joy though it may seem to be unending in the total scheme of things, it is really brief. But there is something, beloved, something that I can tell you today that does last. There is someone who does last. And that is the someone who has created a place for you, a place for us, a home in eternity. Now, people of Good Shepherd are used to hearing me talk about my holy imagination because I use it often. But in my holy imagination, I see the eternal home as a place of fellowship and joy, a place of laughter and excitement, a place of celebrating that does not end, a place of unending love, 
a place where every chapter we experience is better than the last one. And I'm not thinking, I'm not speaking theoretically here because I'm actually speaking of the exact location where I truly believe that Thelma is at this very moment. I believe that because Thelma made the decision by God's grace to place her trust in Jesus Christ, to believe that Jesus truly died for her sins, and because of that, Thelma is now in the never-ending presence of the living God. There's a prayer that I used to say at the ending of some of my calls with Thelma, and she would repeat it with me. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Now this is a prayer that acknowledges that God is a prayer to learn how to live in peace, no matter whatever happens in our lives. It's a prayer that is requesting that, the divine, requesting that divine help and power give us the courage to be agents of change in our own lives, but also in the world. It's a prayer that is requesting the wisdom to discern what is truly worth our time and energy, what is really going to make a difference. I believe, beloved, that Thelma found some encouragement in that prayer each time that we prayed it together. It was one way that she really connected her own life, I believe, to the reality that the God that she came to know and love loved her deeply too. Now, while that prayer may be familiar to many of you, I don't think that many of you know that that was only the first part of the prayer. The rest of the prayer goes like this. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it be, Trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. This whole prayer was written by Reinhold Niebuhr, Niebuhr a great theologian. I love the fuller version of this prayer, and I particularly love it now because I know that the very best part is the last part because of its truthfulness and how it genuinely expresses the here and the now and what we can know about Thelma today and forever. She is now supremely happy with God forever. The one thing we all have in common in this life, beloved, is that there is suffering. There is pain. But that isn't all that there is to life, and I'm sure you all know that. There is this thing called an eternal home. There is this thing called unending joy. Now, death is never a pleasant thing for us to face. But it does become bearable for us in the knowledge that we have been offered life everlasting beyond this realm. And that promise has been sealed by the blood of God's own Son, Jesus Christ. And therefore, all things have been made new. We hear that over and over again in Scripture. So I say to you today, family and friends, may you find comfort 
and peace and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Lord Jesus Christ in whom there is light and there is love and there is the eternal. So even as we mourn the loss of our sister Thelma, may we, may we reflect on the life that she lived and the light that she left and the faith that she showed us, a faith which for her opened the door to the eternal. And if we follow her example, at some point, beloved, we are going to walk through that door as well. Amen. Abide with me fast walls the eventide the darkness deepens lord with me abide when other helpers fails and comfort Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself by guide and stay can be? Thou and through clouds and sunshine abide with me. I would ask that you would please rise now as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed to profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who've been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection 
may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to all who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to hear witness to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. want to know where I'm going, where I'm going soon. If anybody asks you where I'm going, where
But comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone. And as God gives me grace, I'll run this race until I see my Savior face to Jessica and Dr. Brown, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I would ask that everyone but the family please rise as we commend our sister Thelma. Let us commend Thelma to the mercy of God, our maker and our redeemer. Into your hands, O oh merciful, merciful Savior, we commend your servant Thelma. Acknowledge we beseech you a, spear, a sheep of your own fold a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in life. And God's people said, Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of all sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good thing, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, whom be the glory forever and ever. And God's people said, Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Let us now go in peace. In the name of Christ, amen.
family will recess first and then friends. go ahead and I'll we just have to wait a few minutes for me to undress so I can get in the car and then we'll leave yes you can, we, you can wait till it's in the bed oh no you know what I need to do yeah. all right now 